Today at the market we visit two farmers with very different things to show us. First, we visit with Mark Cupper. Mark, along with Chris Fenendahl, run Creekside Farm. This picturesque 40-acre farm is located near the town of Prairie du Chien. Set within the steep hills and deep valleys of an area dominated by the rolling Mississippi River, Mark and Chris grow vegetable sets, bedding plants, and the subject of our visit today, succulents. Succulents are water-retaining plants adapted to arid climate or soil conditions. Mark and Chris are well known for the succulent dish gardens that they bring to market. Today Mark describes a very special dish garden populated with an unusual succulent called a lithop. Next we visit with Mary Selly, the bee charmer. Charming to certainly more than just bees, Mary shows us how a new queen bee is introduced into a hive where the queen has died or stopped producing offspring. We'll visit with Mark first. How are you doing, Bill? Good, how are you? We haven't seen you since when? It's been a while. Oh, hi, Bill. How are you? I'm fine. Nobody, You've been busy? Nobody's ever seen. Well, let me get some of those Isn't on the film. The living stone? Okay. And where it grows in the desert, you know, it's buried right down in the soil and sand blows over it. And it, it does that to hide from the sun and from little critters that want the water that's in South so, Africa. That is a South Africa. South Africa. Just about all these come from Africa. And that is a, um, those are living. Those are living. You know, here you get a little, when you have them in captivity, you get to raise them up out of the ground. Okay. Okay, and how do you take care of them? Water them four times a year. Water them four times a year? Well, who's going to do but that? You don't get That's to too much pick, work. You don't get to pick the four times. Okay. So you almost have to write it down. And we give you, of course, instructions. Um, you ready? Because what? Because you... Every year, these are, these are leaves. It's an adaptation to the desert, and the leaves are buried under the soil. These leaves separate. See these? Out okay. comes a new plant. It drinks the water in these old leaves for months and months. Wow. Yeah. And it drinks the water from the old yeah. leaves. Okay. These are the leaves that separate it. Out of the middle comes a new plant. Okay. And it's drinking that water. They have to be three years old to do this. And what are they called? What are these plants called? Lithop. Lithop. Lithop, nicknamed Living Stone. Now at five years old, two come out. So it forms a clump eventually. Wow. Over the years. And, uh, oops, they would stay in that little pot for? About forever. About forever. Yeah, that just root about. system isn't that much. Uh, okay. Yeah, Fascinating. It just, oh, they are. And you get, them, you get them in the light, and they glow. The sunlight, I recommend that. Yeah, they're that. beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah, this one I can see from the... From where I'm at, 400 different tops on them. Fast, amazing. Cool. I don't even need to sign it. We'll see how crabby they are. Wow. So I insulate. See, this hive is struggling because it's... Because it has no queen. Are you sure? I have an X on it. Where's one of them? Let's see how they start acting. And how can you tell that it has no queen? Oh, because there's no eggs. Oh. A bunch of drone cells is another indication. I'll show you. So this is a package bee I started oh about a month ago. It comes like five thousand bees in the package. I see. See, they try to raise a queen. Uh-huh. And if she's out, 
survival of the fittest. Good enough. Yeah, they're, they're starting to get on the cage now. See, they, they're happy. So. See, yes, I got a thing. I, got, I have so many irons in the fire. I might have given this a frame of brood and eggs. I think I did. Just to keep them stuff stained, you know? Mm-hmm. See how they're starting to fan, though? They're saying, oh, there's a queen here. Or another queen. I think they, yeah, see how happy they are now? See them, see their wings move? Yeah, I must have given them a couple of frames yesterday. Yeah, this one I think had a lot of drones in it, so. So now what I do now is put her. Yeah, they're not stinging her. See how they want to take care of her and feed her? Now, if they wanted to sting her, how would they be acting? Their butts would be stinging the, the, the cage. Gotcha. So, yeah, they so then what I do... And how does she get out of there? I'll have to go release her in a couple of days. So she's going to stay in there for a few days? Oh, about a day I'll leave her. Just because I don't want them to kill me. They have to get used to her scent. Okay. So now... And then once they're used to her scent... They accept her and then she starts laying eggs. So I just saved this colony from dying. Wow. If they don't have a queen, they can't survive. And typically, without a queen, how long would they... I mean, they, then that means oh. they just... They so slowly dwindle. It takes a month or two. How long does a bee li uh, live? In the summer, just six weeks, the workers. The queen lives like three years. If she's a good queen. Really? Oh, Alright, right, so now I have to put my ex back on here to know that I've got a queen in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we'll do this. This one. I might have. See how they're starting to come over? Uh huh. Uh, I must have given this eggs yesterday too. I must have been on a roll. Sometimes you get, get laying workers too, and they're hard, hard to spot because they're a worker. And you'll do the same thing, just leave her in there for a few days? Yeah. Oh yeah, see the drone cells over here. I must have added this. That bee just came out. See how long it is? 